spirit of the world. Amen. Now, a person that begins to, a brother for instance, that is spying pornography. Spying pornography runs away because his conscience is pricking him. He runs away. He's yielding to the spirit of the world. The time he's looking at that thing, he's yielding. He's giving in to the spirit of the world. Am I communicating with you? A time comes that the more he yields to the devil, the weaker his resistance to that spirit becomes. His spiritual immunity begins to drop as he continues to yield to the devil. Because you don't yield to the devil without a battle. Your conscience, as you want to yield, your conscience is trying to pull you back, but you are conceding to the, to the restraint of the, of, of, of the Spirit. You are refusing the restraint of the Spirit and conceding to the pull of the Spirit of the world. Do you understand me? The Holy Spirit is pulling you not to go, but the Spirit of the world is also pulling you to come. The Holy Spirit is pulling you through your conscience. The spirit of the world is pulling you through your flesh. Am I communicating with you? Now, when he pulls you, there is something in between the spirit of the world and the Holy Spirit. That thing is your will. You will decide through your will to obey either the spirit of the world or the Holy Spirit. Am I communicating to us? Am I communicating to us? So, a believer, when he concedes to the spirit of the world, decides to obey that spirit. The spirit of the world will not remove your trousers. It will not pull your pants. It will not remove your bra. It will not take away your undies. It is you with your hand, when you have said yes to him, that pulls those things. Is that understood? Beautiful. So, we see here, that so, the more you begin to concede to him, the lesser your restraint becomes, and gradually, gradually, you begin to develop a worldly lifestyle. A time will come where you now sit with pornography, and you enjoy it. At that time, the spirit, the spirit of the world is no longer pulling you. The spirit of the Lord, ha- the world has possessed you. So you find out that you can't do without watching pornography. You always want to watch it. Even though you know it's bad, you can, your will has been destroyed by the spirit of violence that you have yielded to. Am I communicating with us? So, we we'll see there that, so to be worldly means to be earthly, to be earthbound, to be sensual, to be governed and trapped within our senses, and to be demonic, to be demonically driven, to be demonically driven to the end that if care is not taken, you become demonic, or you become demon possessed. Amen. I hope I've been able to make a difference between yielding to demons and being demon possessed. Huh? Color? Do you know the difference? So, we can see from so far that the cause James 4, 1 to 6 tells us that loss is the desire for pleasures, pleasures that God forbids us. Now, I said that some of the fruits of worldliness, bitter envy, self-seeking. Again, if you go into the book of Galatians, you will see there that the Bible also talks about the works of the flesh. Don't forget the loss of the eyes and the loss of the flesh. When we say flesh, you are not talking about your skin. You are talking about the system of the world. The work, the working of sin. Everybody inherited sin from Adam. Even the unborn baby inherited sin from Adam. That sin nature is what is called flesh. Am I communicating with you? Am I communicating with you? Now know that sin is the destination that the spirit of the world will take us to. That is what it seeks to accomplish. The spirit of the world seeks to accomplish sin in the life of a believer because he knows that once a believer lives in sin or commits sin, he doesn't need to. Once he takes you to the bus stop called sin, the rest is automatic. It will just be playing out itself. Where there is sin, death comes in. So what is the purpose or the aim, the vision of the spirit of the world is to take a believer, put pressure on a believer to sin. Once the believer sin, that spirit relax. The spirit, number one, has legitimate right to enter into your life. Number two, he has legitimate ground to do anything with you. Fill you with evil spirits. Fill you with himself, one. After filling you with himself, if he works on you well enough, he can decide to go and bring his father, his mother, his younger ones, and his company, and fill you. So that when Jesus meets with you, 
and he's talking to the spirit in you, the spirit will say, I am not alone, sir. We are many. Am I communicating with you? Am I communicating with you? Beautiful. So, when the Bible talks about the works of the flesh, it is talking about the working of the sin nature inside us that actually was the resultant effect of Adam and Eve having an encounter with the ruler of the world. So the fruit of the spirit of the world is adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outburst of wrath. This one is one way the spirit of the world manifests in many believers. Outburst of wrath. And you know, many believers undermine it. Because it doesn't look evil. It doesn't look, when you say, ah ah, somebody has committed fornication. Hey, everybody pulls back. But when somebody bursts out in anger, we think that, hey, calm down now. You say, calm down. Uh uh-uh. uh. That person is yielding to a worldly spirit. Outburst of, of anger. You refuse to control your anger or you give your anger the right to control you. Outburst of anger. Self ambition. Dissension. Heresy. You see that no man can become a heretic without the spirit of the world. None. It takes the influence of strange spirit for a man to say that Jesus Christ is not God. It takes the influence of strange spirit for a man to say that there is no resurrection. It takes the influence of strange spirit for a man to say that there is no hell. Deceiving spirit has taken over such a person. Drunkenness revilries. Amen? Praise the Lord. So you will see that these are things that are indicators of the spirit of the world or worldliness. Amen? Are you there? Do I have your attention? So, when a believer is said to be worldly, what does it mean? It means the believer is yielded to the spirit of the world. Now, the reason and the danger of that is that you are trying to keep cold water and warm water together in one cup. A believer that yields to the spirit of the world is trying to do the impossible. To harbor in himself the spirit of the world, and at the same time to have the Holy Spirit indwell him, it is not possible. Because the spirit of the world and the Holy Spirit maintain separate governments. They both have separate values, and they are under separate kingdoms. The spirit of the world says it is okay to have sex a night before marriage, The Holy Spirit says, it is not okay. You require the blessing of God before you can come together sexually. The Spirit of the world says that everybody does it. There is nothing wrong with doing it. The Word of the Lord says that one man can make a difference. The Spirit of the world says that you don't need to wait. The Word of the Lord says that blessed is the man that waits patiently. (laughs) Amen? So, What is the purpose of this class? The purpose of this class is simple. If God is going to use you and I to change the world, to influence our generation, to touch lives, to turn lives around for God, if the Lord is going to use us as His power spot on the face of the earth, we cannot afford to be worldly people. We cannot afford to tolerate those things that we know are not rooted in Jesus. We cannot afford to keep and harbor those things we know. And the Spirit of God bears witness in our heart that those things did not come from the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the world has gained access into the hearts of many believers today through television. They sit down with programs where the man is naked, the woman is naked, and they are sleeping with each other. They roll from table to the bed, from the bed to the kitchen. They roll down from the staircase, from the staircase to under the basement. They roll into the roads too, until the trailer runs over them. And it becomes your perfect academic picture to learn and to school yourself on what sex in marriage should be like. From that, you are possessed. You have learned the spirit of the world has gained access to you. Look, it doesn't need to begin to move you. Uh uh-uh. uh. It doesn't need to move you like that for you to know that. <laughs> 
It doesn't need to move you like that for you to know that you have become worldly. All you need to check, the first way to know whether you are worldly or not is to check your value system. What are those things that are your standards? Are you one of those people that believe that there is employment age? That employment age is different from normal age. You are worldly. Because that's a lie. They say like there is football age. There is employment age. It is Nigerians that have football age. Those people over there don't have. They disclose their age, what they are. Their birth certificates are traceable. If they tell lies. So where did that originate from? From the heart of desperate Nigerians who wants to play football abroad. What is your value system? Is it okay to buy things and keep the change back? Pastor sent you on an errand. He said, please go and get us battery. And you got the battery and you took five minutes and drank your water. And you feel it, there's nothing wrong with it. You are worldly. And when they ask you how much is it by the case, I said, Pastor, it's 95 naira. He bought it 90 naira, he calculated his comfort into the money of the case. <laughs> it's worldliness. It is yielding to deceiving spirit. It is a lie. It's a question of time. The devil will crack you open. Am I communicating to you? So you check your values. You don't have to be possessed jumping on the road like a mad person to know that you are filled with the spirit of the world. No. It starts with your values. When you watch TV, what are the things you permit to go into yourself? What are the things you allow yourself to watch? When the spirit of God begins to grow, when a person begins to grow in the Holy Spirit and he begins to work strong, develop to maturity in the Lord, one of the things is that the spirit within him, the spirit of his conscience and the conscience of his spirit will not tolerate certain things. You are weak in the spirit to the extent to which you are yielded to the spirit of the world. You are prone to certain kind of sin to the extent to which you permit that sin, the display of that sin around you. A person that does not see anything wrong with sex on TV, in the back of a car, on the road, played lights on national TV, is closer to committing adultery and fornication than a man who consistently takes his eyes off such things and will not give himself to such. <clears throat> I'm not saying such a man is immune against it. I'm saying that he has better chances of not falling prey to that sin. <clears throat> Amen. What are your values? The fashion that soaks a long down and slices it by the side to the point of your hip. Amen. Or that type that you wear that exposes your navel and shows, it, and shows your cleavage. There is nothing wrong with it. Yes, because... Superstar Jennifer Lopez is wearing it. Huh? Because Angelina Jolie is wearing it. Because Beyonce is wearing it. Unfortunately, the people that set the dressing standard for sisters in the world are unbelievers on the telly. Beyonce is not born again. You don't need the devil to tell you Angelina Jolie is not born again. You don't need an angel from heaven to tell you Jennifer Lopez is not born again. But these are the people that will look at their dress style and their dress sense and we begin to fashion things for ourselves. The ties you see on them is what you want to wear. The bling bling they wear is what you want to wear. You even see pastors today in bling bling. 50 cents bling bling. And you say you are not worldly. Where do you take your inspiration from? That's the second thing. After looking at your value, where does your inspiration come from? Who are you trying to imitate? The person you are imitating. Where is that person drawing that strength from? Your inspiration as a singer, who is it coming from? From the devil or from God? One of the reasons why I may have problem with certain songs, or I have problem with certain songs, is not because of the style of the song, it's because of where the song is coming from. The spirit behind the song, and somebody now adopts that thing and brings it into the church. And somebody will come who wants to sing a willow, but knows that if he sings a willow, she'll be confronted. So she takes it and twists it around and produces something else out of it. But when she's singing that song, even if she actually has a right heart, 
And in expressing the song, she actually, genuinely, has been able to bring out that song from a right fountain within her spirit. You can tell that the people that are dancing to it are dancing to a willow, not what she's singing. Your inspiration, where does your inspiration come from? Your dress inspiration, where does it come from? Your song inspiration, where does it come from? Who are you modeling your life after? It tells us whether you are worldly or not. Am I communicating with you? So this is our first class of our discipleship class. When we go outside and we begin to preach to people and do personal witnessing, and people begin to ask questions, and you begin to tell them, look, worldliness is a sin. It will destroy you. You know what you are saying. The destiny of this world is eternal destruction. God is going to destroy the world. When we say the world, we are not talking about the earth. The earth is destroyed and brought under condemnation already because the earth and the heaven harbors the world. It takes the heavenlies and the earth for the world to try. Principalities and powers, they walk from the heavenlies down to the earth to exert their influence upon men. So when Jesus comes, there will be a rolling away of the heavens and the burning up of the earth and its elements. So the Bible tells us that there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth where dwelleth righteousness. So anybody that is a child of God that allows worldliness into his own heart or into his own spirit and begins to carry that worldliness around, he also carries the verdict of the Lord upon worldliness. Destruction without second, without second chance. Am I communicating with us? Praise the Lord. So we stop here for today. Hallelujah. Any question? Any question? When the copies of the tape is outside, I'm trusting God that all the discipleship classes are going to match them and put them together as a package. I hope we are going to get them and listen to them over and over again and do our own personal study on them. You cannot be worldly and be godly. It is not possible. It is not. Amen. Any question? In the absence of none, let us rise up on our feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mercy and for your kindness. We ask for the grace to live right before you in holiness and not to be worldly in the name of Jesus. Help us that at the end of the day, we may be men of Jesus. Help us that at the end of the day, we may be men of Jesus. Help us that at the end of the day, we may be men of Jesus. Help us. But at the end of the day, we may be men of Jesus.